Hi everyone, welcome to RetroFlix. I want to start off today by saying I'm sorry I've been gone for a little while, but I had a little bit of an accident as you can see in my nose, so you're going to see a band-aid here probably for a while on my nose. I had a little bit of a, a fall and uh, and cut my nose so just wanted to let you know as to why i'm sitting here with band-aid on my nose um, but it, you know the show must go on so today's episode is about a tv sitcom that became one of the best ever but it was almost canceled it came 74th out of 77 shows after its first season but thankfully it wasn't that story and more next Hi everybody, welcome to RetroFlix, your channel for movie and TV retrospectives. As I said in the opening, today's, today's episode is about a sitcom that almost didn't make it out of the first season. And it's an historic sitcom, one of the best ever. I can't even imagine it not being around, but it almost wasn't. And thankfully it was saved by the president of the network, and that network being NBC, and that president being Brandon Tartikoff. Tarkov believed that if this show was promoted more, it could lead into his vision of taking over, particularly the sitcom realm in television, if not television in general. You gotta remember, there were three networks at this time, three big networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. And CBS and ABC pretty much ruled particularly the sitcom world, but TV in general for a long time. And particularly as you were going through the 70s and the 80s, if you just look even the 70s, ABC and CBS had TV shows like All in the Family, MASH, The, the Jeffersons, Happy Days. Now some of those bled in the 80s, but they were, they were the, for the most part, 70s shows. And that's just to name a few. NBC really didn't have much at all going on. And Tarkov wanted to change that. And he was going to change it, hopefully starting with this sitcom. After the sitcom's first season, when it was 74th out of 77, they re-aired it. Part of their promotion was, we're going to put it on over the summertime and try to grow an audience. There are a lot of people out there that maybe for whatever reason didn't see this, even kids, teenagers that like to laugh, or maybe in school, maybe not up. In the summer, they will be. And that's what they did in the summer of 1983. And it worked. It started to gain an audience, and that led to a steamroll of this night, uh, Thursday night, and a TV in general for this network. Our feature TV show that I'm talking about here is the sitcom Cheers. Cheers was developed and created by brothers Glenn and Les Charles and James Burroughs. They were looking at having a show basically uh, that revolved around a relationship between who was going to be an average, you know, jock type individual in the male, and then the woman being a classy, sophisticated female. And they wanted it to be in a place, whether it be a workplace or a social place where they'll have other co-workers, other customers and guests, and they will and they will just have this interaction amongst the workers and amongst the customers and, and have this socialization, almost, almost kind of like a family they all would be. And so this was, this, this was their vision of this show. And the first thing they think about was where they're going to hold this. Where is that, where is that venue going to be? And at first they thought it was going to be maybe a hotel or an inn. And they decided to go with a tavern. And then they had to look at where are we going to hold this? Where is the setting of this going to be? They were looking out west. They went in the Midwest like Kansas City. But they decided to go to Boston. So they went to Boston and said they were going to set this uh, TV show there. And interestingly enough, they went to Boston and tried to find a, uh, a, a, a tavern or a bar they could replicate uh, the show to, you know, and, and kind of be the, the example, you know, that we're going to do this, that we're going to, the set in the show is going to be after this bar. And they ended up finding through the telephone book a bar called The Bull and Finch. 
And the, they went to the bull and finch and the guy that owned it said, yeah, sure, you can shoot around. They wanted to shoot like an exterior and the interior is not a lot. This is not really, it's, it, the, the real bar is a lot smaller than the actual set, but a lot of the exterior shots they, that they had for the show was actually the bull and finch. And the guy that owned it said, sure, just give me a dollar. And they gave him a dollar and they took all the shots, but you know, you'd be like, you, you, you you would think, wow, geez, that boy, I bet you he's kicking himself, but really he's not because of the merchandising he has been doing for all these years. He has made millions on merchandising that the Bull and Finch was actually cheers. So it really, it really worked out with him, of course. Let's look at, let's look at the cast. The original cast. Now there's going to be some changes, but let's look at the original cast. The original cast the the average you know the athletic average or some of them kind of thought you know it's, it's more like the dumb jock type of character was going to be uh, Sam Malone was the name of the character and they were then going to look at the woman who was going to be the sophisticated classy educated um, part uh, the, the female that was going to be um, the name of that character is Diane Chambers so they had to they had to find a, a male and female that would have good chemistry there because again as we said earlier they were looking at setting the sitcom around the relationship of, of this male and female dynamic and and they decided to do this and go through couple after couple after couple and they decided to go with Ted Danson and Shelley Long. Now the, now the producers and the creators knew Shelley Long and actually they wanted her to, but Shelley Long didn't want it just given to her and she wanted the audition but they, they said she was she was it right from the get-go. Uh, Ted Danson, an experienced actor, he came in, he went to Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh for theater so it, that that is his background but he wasn't really a known commodity at all. Um, another, another couple that actually auditioned for the role of Sam and Diane was Fred Dreyer and Julia Duffy. Fred Dreyer, for those of you that might know sports, he was, he played for the Los Angeles Rams back in the 70s. And then when he was on the football, he transitioned into acting. And Julia Duffy would actually go on to to uh, be in the sitcom Newhart, the, not the 70s, the Bob Newhart, but then the, the recreation of Newhart in the 80s. And she played in that sitcom. And uh, But Fred Dreyer, Fred Dreyer would go on to have a, actually a successful show called Hunter later down the line but the chemistry between Ted Dance and Shelley Long was just uh, you know they just they, they just it was unmistakable, you know. I mean, and they they got the they got the role after that, no doubt about it. Just an interesting fact here: um, Ed O'Neill, who would go on to to uh, stake his uh, fame on uh, Married with Children, and then of course go on to another one, Modern Family. He actually auditioned for the role of uh, Sam Malone. I saw an interview with him, and he said Sam Malone. They they they, they at first won a football player, which would which would be Fred Dreyer. No, he played football. And Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill actually went to training camp with the Pittsburgh Steelers back in 1969. And so that's what they were looking at for the role, according to Ed O'Neill. But when Ted Danson got uh, got the role, they switched to a baseball player because he had more of a, a baseball build. But I think he could have been a quarterback. Ted Danson's tall, and you know, and so I think he could have. Been, I think he could have played a quarterback instead of a pitcher. But they changed it to baseball because, uh, according to Ed O'Neill, because of his build, and made him a pitcher. The next, the next picture. The next cast member I want to talk about is Coach Ernie Pantuso, who will be a bartender for Sam, uh, and that's going to be played by Nicholas Colasanto. Uh, coach Ernie Pantuso was an ex-coach of, of uh, Sam Malone with the Red Sox. And he will then, after his career of coaching, come up with Sam. They were very good friends, and he would come up, they, he'd come up and bartend after Sam uh, got the the bar. And so I should, I, I said earlier, Sam Malone actually owns this bar. He owns it. And so er, Ernie Pantuso comes up and works for him. Ernie Pantuso is very sweet man, probably borderline senile, but just just hysterical character. Nicholas Casanto played him wonderfully. Uh, the next one will be Carla Tortelli, who is played by Rhea Perlman. And uh, that basically, you know, Car the, the, uh, the uh, Carla Tortelli character is a wisecracking waitress who is not very nice to the customers and also is very flirtatious and 
and so as an ex-husband but you know also too really likes male attention and so forth like that so you know she brings interesting dynamic and then you have uh, Norm Peterson who is paid by George Wendt Norm Peterson is the basically the everyday there bar guy he, he's the one that is there every day and he has his stool and he sits there every day and everybody knows he's coming in and he is he is the regular of all regulars as a matter of fact when he walks into the door everybody knows him so well that they just yell norm when he comes through the door and so that that, that is that's that character and he's and he's he's not he's sporadically employed which allows him to spend a lot of time in the in the in the bar as well uh, the next the next character is Cliff Clavin who's played by John Ratzenberger and Cliff Clavin is the the bar know-it-all and he actually started out as a security guard in the first season but the producers thought that a mail carrier might and have keys that he knows a lot of stuff that that might actually fit that know-it-all character better than the security guard although security guard has a lot of keys too um, it, it certainly worked we know Cliff Clavin as the mail as, as a mailman but I could certainly see how a security guard would have worked as well but that's just the that was just there that was their uh, their justification of that. Uh, interesting story here that the uh, Cliff Clavin character was not a part of this show. It was not in the script, this character. John Ratzenberger auditioned for Norm, and after he auditioned, he knew he wasn't getting it. He just on the spot asked the producers, do you have a bar know-it-all? And the producer said, what do you mean, a no bar know-it-all? And, and John Ratzenberger said, well, every bar has a bar as a guy that comes in, and all he does is talk about everything, all these fat, everything, he knows everything. No matter what, he knows everything. He's the bar know-it-all. And every bar has this. And the producers thought this was a great idea. And, and John Ratzenberger got that role. So John Ratzenberger, just what a resourceful thing, knowing he didn't get that role, he right on the spot came up with one and got it. He, he, he created his own job. I mean, just fantastic. And beyond that, there's going to be some other members, too, that are going to come up throughout the years, and just a few of those, and, and, I, and I think this next one is certainly so important, and that's, a, and that's the role of Woody Boyd, who was played by Woody Harrelson. After the third season, Nicholas Casanto passed away of a heart attack. He was really sick and passed away in February of 85. And so, when they were on that hiatus, they were looking at getting somebody, and they thought, well, we're going to get somebody younger in there and, uh, and try to write that storyline because Coach was so beloved. And so after Nicholas Colasanto passed away, they came up with this, they came up with this uh, transition that we're going to get a country farm boy that's actually been pen pals with Coach. And, the, and this country boy is going to come up and meet Coach and come to the city and meet Coach. And he's going to find out that Coach passed away. And so, and, and, that, and they auditioned for that role of, and it was Woody Boyd. And it's just coincidence that Woody Harrelson got that, and, and, and the character's name was Woody. That was not made for Woody Harrelson. The name was already set. In fact, Woody Harrelson, excuse me, was in California. He, had, he actually was an understudy in theater in New York. He was actually just in California. A friend of his said, hey, they're auditioning for the sitcom, and you're never going to believe this. The, the character, his name is Woody, and he's from Indiana, which Woody was, Woody was, Woody Harrelson was born in Texas and went to Ohio and grew up, and then he went to Indiana to college. So, and he went and auditioned for it, and actually, it was kind of a funny story. Um, it, it was, it was, uh, it, it's been said that Woody Harrelson came into his audition he came in blowing his nose and then whenever they did the and they loved that they loved the, him coming and blowing his nose and then when he auditioned he was auditioning for the scene that he would come in and see Sam Malone ask for coach and find out that coach had passed away and Woody started to cry in the audition and nobody had done that and they just thought that was tremendous and they were like this is the guy our next cast member um, is well actually the character is Dr. Fraser Crane who is played by Kelsey Grammer. Dr. Fraser Crane was a role that was only supposed to be in for a couple episodes and Kelsey Grammer got that role 
And when he got that role, the audience loved him so much and loved that character so much um, that he ended up being a, a regular cast member. And so Dr. Fraser Crane, of course, being a psychiatrist, and he also, a big part of him is going to be Lilith Sturden Crane, who another psychiatrist who he meets and marries, and she, and she is played by B.B. Newworth. And so they're going to have that dynamic with them, too. Of course, we know what happened. Well, maybe we don't know, but you know, Kelsey Grammer took that Frasier, and that was a spinoff of Cheers, and Frasier uh, became one of, the, one of the most popular sitcoms ever as well, too. Next we have Rebecca Howe. Rebecca Howe will come in late, come in about eighty seven, and when there's going to be there's going to be a point where Sam uh, sells his bar to a corporate uh, entity, and that corporate enter, entity then just sends a manager to run Cheers, and Rebecca Howe is that manager. She is a more of a career enter, career oriented go getter um, uh, woman. She's um, you know an MBA and all that. You know, so a lot different than a lot of what you, you saw at cheer so it's that's an interesting dynamic there um, as well um, as far as the ratings go this became a ratings juggernaut yes after the first season 74 out of 77 you know not very good but you can see how that promotion really helped and got they got the got the wheels going because it definitely became must see Thursday night and cheers led that um, not to mention coming in with the Cosby Show and Family Ties and then Night Court. Uh, and, these, and these are uh, TV sitcoms that we're probably going to do on this show at some point. Cheers ran from September of 82 to May of 1993, 11 seasons. The last eight seasons, they were top 10. Seven of those seasons, they were top five. Usually sitcoms, when they're getting in their ninth or tenth year, they might be down in the 20s or 30s. They start to really lose steam. Cheers never did that. And even if you look in the 90s and say they kind of went downhill a little bit, maybe, but they still were very popular. They're still a top 10 hit. Most sitcoms haven't done that that has that lasted that long. Their last two or three seasons, they are way down. Okay, but, you know, a lot of them. Cheers is one of them that wasn't. So just, just a historical, historical TV show. You have to mention the theme song when you talk about Cheers. Gary Portnoy and Judy Hart Angelo were asked to write a theme song for the show. They wrote three theme songs and none, they, none of them passed. None, none of them passed muster. And so they wrote a fourth. In that verse in the fourth, there was a verse that says, where everybody knows your name. And the Charles brothers heard that and they said, that's what this is about. This place is a place where everybody knows your name, where you're kind of, everybody's family here. And th 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 this is something here. So Portnoy and Angelo reworked the, wor the words a little bit more to what the what the what the uh, song ended up being. And Charles loved it, gave it, it's, it, it gave it the go ahead, and it became the it became the uh, the theme song from Cheers. And I want to link it up top here so you can pull it up and listen to it. It's great. As a matter of fact, they might have. And I'll see what I'll see what I, what I link up there. It might be the full song because it is a full song. Although you don't hear the full song in the sitcom, they did have a full. A, a full song with that theme. Um, so, where can you go see this? Um, I don't have I don't have television. I just stream, so it might be on TV somewhere. Um, I, I don't know a TV Land or something like that, or a Me TV or Antenna TV or Laugh. I'm not sure. So if you have any of those, you can check those out. I can tell you where to stream, which is what I do. Um, I have Hulu. I watch it there all the time. So if you have a subscription to Hulu, you can watch it there. And there's Paramount Plus and there's Friendly. Those are all subscription services. You could rent it per episode on Prime Video and Vudu if you're so inclined. I think it's two dollars an episode, but. If you have Hulu, Paramount Plus, or Friendly, you have a subscription to it. You can watch everything. 275 episodes. I know. I know TV. You know we do movies. And you just watch a movie for a couple hours, and this is 11 seasons, 275 episodes. But if you're so inclined to watch it, please do so. For those of you that have watched this and perhaps grew up back then and 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 and, and watched this sitcom and enjoyed it as much as I did, what are your memories of it? Um, I remember the the 80s part of it. I was in junior high and high school. 
school. When it got in the 90s, I was in college and didn't really watch it then until later down the line in reruns. But the 80s, I certainly did as junior high and high school. And I know every Friday, we would come in after watching the episode Thursday night, and we were all reciting the lines of the, of the, of the previous episode. And it's just it's such, a, such a great sitcom. Uh, one of the best ever. And I will say about the theme song, too. And I, I should have mentioned this. Let me, I, I'm just thinking about this. Let me, let me say this, too, about the theme song. Rolling Stone and TV Guide have actually had the, the theme song as the number one theme song in TV history. Everybody knows your name. So I forgot about mentioning that. I just thought about that. I'm glad I caught myself on that. If you've never, if you haven't seen this, and you and you have one of those subscription services, check it out. Check out some episodes, and and come and comment both both sides of that. If you've seen this, comment below. What's your memories? If you haven't seen it, go watch a few episodes. Comment below. What do you think of it? I really enjoy doing this with you. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Until next time, that's a wrap.